In today's tutorial, let's do the scallop crochet dishcloth and this is in Christmas colors or regular colors. You can decide what works with your lifestyle. Welcome back to the Crochet Crowd as well as Yarnspirations.com. I'm your host Mikey. Today we're going to do the scallop crochet dishcloth and I'm going to be teaching this in Christmas colors if you wish and you can just change off the colors. Now you see three different designs here in the pattern. These are not changes of design. They're only changes of color. So you have some options. I am going to do Christmas colors today and I'm going to choose the Bernat Handicrafter for the holidays. I'm going to do that for my middle and then my scalp will be the white here. Or you could use a Lily Sugar and Cream if you wish if, if you want something more um, other than Christmas and you can also use Bernat Handy Crafter. All what ha these have in common is that they're 100% cotton. You need to use cotton when using anything in the kitchen because you need your product projects to dry out in between all the washes and you can toss this in the washing machine and being able to, uh, to really uh, being able to maintain your projects. You cannot use acrylic especially for pot holders or anything that requires heat because those may melt but cotton will not. So let's uh, begin and let's start looking at the pattern more carefully. So this here is our pattern. It's just a one page one. It's considered easy and you can see the different colors that are options here for you in the instructions. We're using a five millimeter size H crochet hook today. There's only two lines of instructions here and then we continue to seven inches. So we're gonna do the middle and then we're gonna circle around the outside in order to make it consistent. So there's two rounds on the outside for doing the scalloped edge. So let's begin. Let's grab our crochet hook and our yarn and let's begin working on the scalloped crochet dishcloth. So let's begin by doing a slip knot and I'm just leaving an extra long tail so I can use that to hide that in with the darning needle at the end. You are using these one dishes but most people do these kind of dishcloths also for decoration reasons and may not even use it. So it's just more decor. It's up to you. So you can use it for either or. So you need to chain 23. Remember that the one on the hook, the slip knot never counts as one. So just go one, two, three, four and five and go all the way to 23 for me. See you back here in just a moment. So you can see that there's texture. So I've got all the way to the end of 23 and there's texture in the photograph and that's achieved by changing a stitch. So every other stitch is different. So we're gonna go second chain from the hook. So just count back. So one and two, turn it over and get the back loop of this and this will do a nicer edge on the end and I want you to single crochet in there. So the rest of this line going across then is that the next one will be a double crochet. So in the back loop of the next chain. So it'll be a double crochet and then the next one will be a single crochet. That's all you're gonna do. So all the way across just opposite to each other. So that was single. The next one has to be a double. Okay and the next one is single and the next one is a double. So please do that all the way down your chain. I'll see you back here in just a moment. So when you get all the way to the end the last one will be a double crochet. How do I know that? Well row number two is gonna repeat over and over and over and the problem is if you end up with a, a single crochet it, you will not be able to complete row number two accurately. So let's go. So we're gonna turn our work and we're going to start up. So that every time we go to start every row now it's always gonna be the same. You're gonna chain one and you're gonna do a single crochet right into the first one and there's a double crochet right underneath. So you're gonna put opposite to what is underneath. So this time it's a single that is over top of a double. The next single will be a double. Do you get that? So you're just doing opposite. So the next one is a single and it's sitting over top of a double and the next one is a double. Okay so this is what's creating those textures in between all of the lines. So the next one is single and double. You get that? Just keep going back and, uh, and forth using those same things. So let me get to the end of the row. Show me, uh, show you what to expect and then I'll let you do the rest and you only have to do, um, it's not very much, you only have to do seven inches tall on this particular project in order to, uh, before you start doing the edging. So I'll see you at the end of this row. So I'm at the end of the row. The last one is a single crochet that's down here. Remember how we did single crochet second chain from the hook? Well the last one's single. So therefore when you're coming across the last one on this one will be a double but that's also in line. So that you don't have to think about that. It just happens. So whenever you uh, turn and go to start you're always gonna start the same way just like I showed you in row number two. So this time what we're gonna do is chain one okay and then a single here and it's gonna be a single because the one underneath is a double. Do you see that? So it's opposite to what's already there and so the next one will be a double and then single and then double and single. So continue to do that. I want you to do uh, seven inches tall and it's from the base here up into here and what we're gonna do is we wanna finish off on the wrong side. So when I go to do the, the wrong side what's gonna happen is that this 
over here should be when I look at it when you finish off it should be over on this side. Okay when you're looking at it. So I'll meet me back here and I'm just gonna do this off camera and I'll, I'll join you and I'll show you how to do the edging. So I just have my seven inches done. I'm finishing on the wrong side. See where the strand is? This is the wrong side when you go to finish. So I need you to finish off right here and I'm gonna use a darning needle to hide in the uh, loose end that is at the end. So I'm just gonna fasten off like so. And so I'm gonna place my yarn and I gotta do it for both sides just through the darning needle. Now these strands will not fall out if you go back and forth three times. So going underneath the stitches don't go on top of the of the row so you don't impact the look on the outside. Go across about an inch. Okay one direction like so and then coming back in the other direction go in a different path but in the same area. If you go in the exact same path it'll come out right. So then you go two and go back one more time three. So you can never stretch this in three different directions therefore this will never fall out and so you can trim it right down to the project and you will never see that strand. So what I want you to do is do the same with the other side here and then meet me back here and we're gonna start doing our revolutions going around. So let's begin to do the scalloped edge. It doesn't matter if it's right side or wrong side because basically you've been going back and forth anyway on this particular design. So it really doesn't matter. So what we need to do is that we need to establish the side here. You will see that there's really no stitch work there. You gotta force that in in order to make it work. You see stitches along the bottom here. Then you gotta force it up on this side and then back across, across the top. So the two sides here you have to put in 21 single crochets evenly across this. Now that number is really important because the fact is is that you're doing scallops. So let's begin. We're gonna create a slip knot just for extra security and we're gonna go right into a corner on the top corner. So you're gonna go right into a corner itself and I need you to just um, fasten on with the slip stitch. So just pull through and through and then we're gonna chain one and then one, sorry, three single crochets into that same section. So you got one, two, and three. So just as a disclaimer here, whenever we do a corner there's gonna be a total of five but we're only starting a first portion of it and then we're gonna finish the other uh, half of this corner when we come back all the way around. So what we have to do is that in this edge here there is no apparent stitch work but we have to get 21 stitches uh, going into here. You may have to try this a few times and just start counting them out. So just go like one and see how I'm trapping this strand. Just go right over top of it. So you're gonna go two and three, four, five, six, and this is seven, eight, nine, and ten. And then you're about halfway across so that makes sense. So you got ten across so then just keep on going. So you got eleven and twelve, I don't wanna grab any other plies so this will be trying again for 12 and then 13, 14 and 15, 16, 17 and 18, 19 and I'm pretty close 20 and I'm really close so I'm just gonna throw another one right into there so there would be 21. So here in the corner piece I'm gonna put five single crochets. So one, two, three, and four, and five. And now I'm just gonna work across this one here just getting every stitch. So I don't need to count just one every stitch here. Okay and what I want to do then is that I want to just uh, go here to the next corner. The next corner is gonna have five single crochets and then I'm gonna do exactly what I just did here. Fit 21 in and then come along this uh, five here, put it uh, here, um, just go along the edge and then we're gonna put two more single crochets to finish off this first corner. I'll leave that with you and I'll see you back here in just a moment. 
So when you get to the last corner remember that you started off with three single crochets so you have to finish it off with two to, to complete that. So what I want to do then is that I want to slip stitch it then to the top of the first single crochet right there and that's kind of the middle one anyway. So here's what we have is we have it going all the way around. It's actually pretty easy and now we're gonna create the scallops for round number two which is the final. So let's begin. So let's begin. We're on the middle one of the corner here and we're gonna do the scallop around the edge corner. So when we do this one we're only gonna do half a corner like we did here with the single crochet. So we're gonna chain up uh, three. So one, two and three and then what we want to do then is that we want to come and do three double crochets into the same section that you did the join. So one, two and three. So watch what we're gonna do here for the scallops because they're not a consistent number of, of being even between the scallops and so that's what's creating the look. So we have to then skip over. So skip two, so one and two and single crochet into the third like that. Skip one only and then you're gonna do five uh, double crochets into the next one. So one, two, three, four and five. Okay, so here's the repeat pattern. So you skip two, one and two, go to the third for a single crochet, skip only one and then five double crochets into the next. And I want you to do that same idea going all the way to the first corner and I'll see you there in just a moment. So when you get the final scallop before the corner you're gonna skip the next two in single crochet into the next. Now because you're going to the corner next in the middle one of the of the five you're gonna skip two as it states and then you're gonna put eight double crochets right in the corner. So you got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven and eight. Then you pick up the pattern again like it's going across the edge. So you're gonna skip the next two, single crochet in the next, skip only one and then five into the next one after that. So it's the second one over so there's five double crochets. So it's just the corners that you need to watch out for uh, for being unusual but that's because it's turning a corner. So you, you should expect a little bit of something, right? So let's uh, continue to go along this uh, side edge again. So once you get your five done, skip two, single crochet into the third one over, skip one, five double crochets into the next one after that. So do that and I'll see you at the next corner just to review on how to do a corner. So I'm coming up to the next corner. You should know that there's four scallops in between. I just realized that. So one, two, three and four and then you have a corner and then one, two, three and four. So once you get to the corner then is that you're just continuing as normal. Skip over two and, st uh, and then into the corner you're gonna put eight double crochets. So remember what you did. So you skip two and then you single crocheted, skip two and then you're going into a corner. So just uh, make sure you do that and your stitch count should be perfect anyway if you were counting on the last round. So there's gonna be eight in this one. I've got four so far and this is five, six, seven and eight and then start again. So skip two, one and two, single crochet in the next, skip one, five double crochet into the next. So do, do that and uh, I'll meet you at the end of this where we'll just uh, wrap this tutorial up for today and I'll see you then in just a moment. When you get all the way back around you're just gonna come and you remember how we did uh, four double crochets. The chain three of the first one counts as one of them and then we did three. So there's a total of four in here already. But remember in the corner that we should have a total of eight. So when you come back around you should finish this one corner with a total of four more double crochets double crochets to give it a total of eight to be consistent with the remaining um, corners that exist. So I've just put in four here and I'm going to just attach it to the top. So I'm just gonna slip stitch to the top of the chain three and now I want to make sure that I fasten that in nicely. So I'm just gonna cut my yarn at this time, grab my darning needle and what I want to do is that I want to make sure that I can get it. Now some people would weave that in with their crochet hook but you know if you're gonna actually use this project you don't want these strands falling out on you. Use a downy needle. It only takes a few moments and uh, you just whip it back and forth inside the stitch work like I had showed you back and forth three times. Just take your time. Cotton is a lot stronger so sometimes it's harder to get this needle through. 
but that's a good thing because if it's too flimsy and falls apart on you what's the point right? So just back and forth three times and therefore you can use this project or you can use our, you can actually just use it as decor. It's up to you. It's your lifestyle. It's your business and etc. So just uh, safely just trim off your yarn like so. You are good to go and you can wrap that up for a gift for somebody or just use it for holiday decor. So until next time I'm Mikey on behalf of the Crochet Crowd as well as Yarnspirations.com. Have a great day and this here is a fabulous little dishcloth for you to have. Thank you.